Open for Business is presented by Eagle Broadcasting Corporation and Globe My Business. Create your success. Greetings from the Philippines to the world. It's March 16, 5 p.m. here in Manila. We are on Facebook Live on Eagle News and also on our digital channel, eaglenewslive.com. Watch the video also in, in the Eagle News channel on YouTube. I am Cesar Vallejos and we are open for business. Join me, discover the latest news and information in business around the world. Stay ahead of the curve from vision to action. The peso is 52.59 against the dollar, and at the closing of trade last Friday, the Philippine Stock Exchange Index closed at 7,798.28, up 47.86 points, or 0.62%. Startups in the Philippines are flourishing, but according to the Manila director of the Founder Institute, the cold reality is that only 5% of startups will be successful, and many are doomed to fail. And so as we enter the second quarter of the year, it's time to check your roadmap in growing your startup in the coming months and years ahead. Now is the opportunity to infuse creativity, inspiration, and passion back into every aspect of your startup, especially your marketing strategy. We are very privileged this afternoon to have the, to have the Philippines marketing guru and the most awarded business educator in the country to help bring your startup's marketing efforts into hyperdrive. Record-breaking, best-selling author Josiah Go is in the house. He's also the chairman of Mansmith and Filters and Waters Philippines and over a dozen other companies. Before we invite him on the set, let's see these headlines from our business news provider, Business Mirror. This portion is brought to you by Business Mirror, a broader look at today's business. Beyond dry spells, El Nino could induce violent storms. Mega World BCDA team up to create a new district in Fort Bonifacio. Incentives to carriers flying to local airports. And here are the details. The onset of El Nino in the country is said to be a major risk to the country's growth and inflation prospects for the year ING Bank Manila economist Nicolas Mapa warned. MAPA wrote that El Nino not only plagues the country with drought and dry spells, but it can induce even more uh, virulent typhoon activity, a bane to the already decelerating inflation and the ailing agricultural sector of the country. MAPA added El Nino will undoubtedly hamper our agricultural production, which in itself is coming off a lackluster performance in 2018. Crop damage as well as poor harvest for fisheries will likely to see the agricultural sector challenged for a second year. MAPA said the expected drought will also sap some momentum from the local manufacturing sector given the heavy weight of food manufacturers in the overall sector at 24%. The drought's effect on the country's overall growth via the agricultural sector is likely to be aggravated by the government's inability to pass a budget, budget according to MAPA. Property developer Megaworld Corporation and the Basis Conversion and Development Authority have teamed up to rebrand their respective properties located within the southern part of the former Fort Bonifacio military camp in Taguig, creating what it called a new district. The companies will call the development the Bonifacio Capital District or BCD, a combined 160 hectares of land of Megaworld and BCDA. Both will pursue developments in their respective areas, but Megaworld will manage the new district. By 2025, the district will be a location of one of the proposed stations of the ongoing Metro Manila subway project, initially named as Lawton East Station. The government may dangle incentives to foreign carriers to encourage them to mount direct flights to tourism destinations instead of Manila, a state official said. Department of Tourism Route Development Team Head 
Erwin Balane said, creating new direct services to secondary airports such as Cebu, Bohol, and Palawan will help generate more tourism potentials. Direct flights entice tourists to visit a certain destination. This removes the hassle of transiting from another airport like Manila just to get to the tourism sites. Incentives could be in the form of discounts on landing, parking, and takeoff fees. The incentive scheme could help the government achieve its target of attracting 12 million foreign tourists by 2022 at the end of President Duterte's term. And we will be talking with the marketing guru Josiah Go when Open for Business returns. Open for Business will be back. Stay tuned. Business is presented by Globe My Business. Create your success. We are open for business and we are here with a marketing guru, Josiah Go, chairman of Mansmith and Filters and Water Philippines and other a dozen of companies. Thank you for coming, Sir John. Thanks for inviting me, Cesar. Okay. Sir, as mentioned in my uh, introduction earlier, the startup uh, sector is really flourishing. There's a lot of, uh, you know, based on the latest statistics that we got, uh, there's about 350 or even 750 uh, startups in the country. Well, there could be more. Yes. So what drives this flourishing industry, sir? Well, you know, uh, number one is the, the desire of people to create something on their own, their own business. Mm -hmm. Uh, is uh, a key driver. I think the second thing is that you know the millennials. One mm -hmm. of their key ambition is to have their own business. Mm -hmm. I think there's another one which is really about market needs. Mm -hmm. So once there are gaps in the marketplace that are not being served, mm -hmm. you know that there are people who's going to, regardless of age. They're going to serve it. They're going to do create a business mm -hmm. out of it. That's very interesting, sir, because uh, I th I think months back or years back, there's also uh, some studies that uh, uh, um, put millennials on a more negative light. But this time, it's changing. A lot of millennials are going into business. So, what uh, what's the role of this of the millennials in the um, flourishing of uh, the startups and how do you now describe the character of uh, millennials as far as entrepreneurship is well, concerned? There are, there are two points that I'd like uh, to make no? because I'm in marketing there's no such thing as millennial is one mm -hmm. because a market is composed of market segments mm -hmm. and you know within the millennial segment there are different types of millennials mm -hmm. <clears throat> but in general uh, it appears that the millennials have more uh, focus on purpose. I think it's mm. very important and experience. No? So you can see that the key drivers uh, will now change because companies will try to fulfill their, their needs and expectations. No? Mm -hmm. Uh, which is good because you know it's a it, you know purpose in business is really a necessity. Mm -hmm. You cannot just go into businesses, just make a lot of money, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and you, sir, you you mentioned about that purpose, uh, but uh, based on uh, a lot of reports, also the millennials are very hands-on in terms of technology. Uh, uh, so we see uh, the marriage of uh, technology with that purpose. How potent is the role of technology in the startup? Well, business? because they're digital native. Uh, like for example, in our case, when I started working, typewriter and you know, others. <laughs> I mean, we're, and then of course, personal computer came about, etc. But in their case, it's just natural for them. No? 
Yes. Uh, so they're a lot more savvy, and it's very intuitive when they start. You know, when my son will help me <laughs> with with the gadgets that I have. Uh, so you can see that you know product features can be a little more sophisticated mm -hmm. because you know once you get into it, once you get used to a particular, you want to get to the next level. No? Right. But there will always be opportunity for you know basic and then the subsequent one. As I said, there are always different segments, different opportunities. Mm -hmm. Sir Ofcom, I uh, I was I, I mentioned to you earlier that I was one of those uh, uh, people that you have mentored, and it was uh, you know for us uh, it was life changing, <laughs> and that you. was uh, years ago. I will not tell decades, sir. Uh, but 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 we were much younger. <laughs> yes, we were we were much younger, and I had hair then, <laughs> <laughs> sir. Uh, being exposed to different market segments. Uh, what has changed in marketing? But essentially, when I try to review and remember what I learned from you, they're still the same. The, the principles are still the same. It's just that there's now more involvement with technology. But, you know, we're straight from you, sir, what has changed in marketing? Well, you know, we uh, published an uh, article about marketing trends. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, a series of articles on marketing trends. Uh, like, for example, uh, we, there's uh, a lot of popularity in the usage of behavioral economics. Mm -hmm. uh, companies are now starting to have chief experience officer. Chief uh, ex. No, chief experience chief, oh, officer. Uh, the more progressive companies are uh -huh. even creating chief innovation officers. Yeah. And so, and, you know, there's so many things that are happening which were not happening before, no? Mm -hmm. uh, I would, I would uh, recommend your viewers. Uh, I, in fact, it's in my, it's in my website. Can I? Can sure, I sure, sure, sure. Josiago.com, just search trends mm -hmm. and it will come out. No, there are quite a number of articles mm -hmm. there, but uh, you know, but like for example, behavior economics. If you don't watch out, uh, you know there are and companies can, especially for entrepreneurs, they don't have to spend as much. Mm -hmm. Small changes, big impact, low cost. You don't go an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. diba, no? Small changes, big impact. Big impact, low, low cost. We can, we can just, for example. Uh, you know, there are studies about uh, sampling of food. Okay. <clears throat> and so, so here's a question that I want to ask you. So if you, if, do you have to sample five different types of, you know, spreads? Or you, would you rather sample 24 different types of spreads, you know? And, you know, studies have shown that, in fact, the one that is 24, it, it's not the more the merrier. People yes. get confused. Right. But the one that has, you know, lesser, less is more. Less is more. You know, they actually have more people sampling and more people buying. Wow. So, again, so if you don't know that, you say, wow, well, okay, let's, uh -huh. let's come up with as many samples. Correct. Cannot be. Okay, right. Correct. So, once you, once you know this, Mm -hmm. then it's, it's, it's actually something that you can use to your advantage. No? Perfect. Now, you mentioned, sir, um, uh, companies creating uh, various positions that are not uh, available then. Like, for example, you mentioned about uh, the chief experience officer, the innovation officer, and there's a lot. Actually, there's even data scientists uh, yeah. now. So, but the, the key terms that you mentioned are um, innovation and experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far, that usually crops up every time we, we um, uh, search about marketing strategy. So Correct. what is the role of uh, this experience? Well, you and know, com com companies and brands are always looking for ways to differentiate themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of hard, you know, how can you differentiate yourself if what you're offering is the same as your competitor? Mm -hmm. So in effect, you've got to start saying, so if you add the component of experience, you're, mm -hmm. you're more convenient, for example, or you're experiential. You're not just giving functional benefit, your experience. You allow, like in supermarket, you allow people to choose, you know, the type of fruits that mm -hmm. they want. 
uh, is that going to give you an advantage? And maybe if the answer is yes, then that's good for you. No? Mm -hmm. uh, the second, uh, so experience is one. Innovation is another one because it's 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 to create uniqueness for themselves. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is also, you know, you if you don't stay attuned to what the consumer need, mm -hmm. you'll be left behind, no? Because the consumer will say, okay, so what's next? I've been your, you know, your product has been there, mm -hmm. and so you know, what what is your company doing to mm -hmm. to create change? No? Mm -hmm. And there are so many ways to create change. It's not just change and product. It could be change in what the company offer or the way they offer it. Mm -hmm. Could be different. Could mm -hmm. be quite innovative, no? Uh, in fact, uh, very soon, you know, Mans Manspit and Fielders, one of our the companies that I'm heavily involved in, we sponsor the Young Market Masters Award for the last 15 years. But very soon, we'll, you know, in April 3, during the Market Masters Conference, we'll be launching the Manspit Innovation Awards. Wow. It's the first time that we are recognizing Filipino innovators mm -hmm. in product, in technology, service, in business model, in workplace innovation, in process, mm -hmm. and you know, and other people can do that. They, you know, and we're, you know, give us two weeks where we will make an official announcement. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But we'll post it Management Innovation website. Interesting. Specifically, uh, on innovations, or how do you measure innovation? Uh, so you have input. Uh, then developmental and output, okay. but it all depends on your goals. Okay. Because w why are you having innovation? I think mm -hmm. it it matters, no. But in general, so let's say your output is you might want to say so. How many uh, products do you have that are new mm -hmm. in the marketplace uh, versus your total portfolio? Mm -hmm. You know, or how many? So you you might want to say I want to introduce. 10% of my product must be innovative every year. Mm -hmm. I, sh I should introduce new product. And then you look at your input and say, mm -hmm. what's my pipeline? Mm -hmm. So how many are in the pipeline about to be launched? So you can have a healthy uh, you know, process of introducing new product in the future. Mm -hmm. So and you know, how long do you do this? Uh, and how efficient are you? And how effective are you in terms of testing this innovation concept? Mm -hmm. Because for every innovation introduced, not not everything comes out because some of them would be killed because mm -hmm. it's just not feasible. No? Mm -hmm. And innovation is not necessarily just the introduction of products, sir. You mentioned about you know just changing a business little model. Bit. Business it model. It could be business model, like you know, the, uh, in in uh, buying online, for example. The channel has changed, the way you shop has changed. In effect, it's a business model change. Mm -hmm. And it's very convenient. And one of the trends, uh, you know, it, as you know, is really about online and then, you know, the logistics company now. My son, I asked my son, I said, you have a car, so why don't you drive <laughs> your car? He said, no, first is that I want to rest when I am I don't want to drive. And the second thing is the hassle of parking. <laughs> yeah. And the second thing, there are so many vehicles anyway. And even with food, no? so he said, I, he, he, he ordered grab, grab food. You know? Not an advertisement for grab food. But, <laughs> oh, but, but, you know, so. but actually, sir, a lot of these startups are into that. You mentioned different brands like uh, Grab, like of course with e-commerce, we have Lazada, we have Shopee, and these are startups. And as you mentioned earlier, sorry, these are, uh, they address specific uh, needs, and that is uh, convenience. Is this also, sir, uh, what drive, what is driving startups today? And um, okay. with this marketing, with this market, the, with gaps in the market needs, what else do you see in, in the market gap? Well, you know, you can, a startup can try to fulfill a gap. Okay. But in itself, a startup may have a gap too. Like, one of, one yeah. of the biggest gap of startup is people don't know them, they, don't, they are not trusted. Mm -hmm. So for example, I put up a store, Sputnik and company or whatever, okay. I start selling, and you can say, wow, this is, and then you start saying, okay, I'm gonna give you my money, mm -hmm. so but I don't know you. Mm -hmm. so, so the question here is, Startup have an easier time now because you have digitalization. Mm -hmm. 
but they have to understand how do you now promote trust because you're not trusted mm -hmm. a brick and mortar store creating an online immediately they're trusted mm -hmm. you know and people say i'll give you my credit card mm -hmm. details but then you have to start asking yourself so how do you facilitate trust how do you, so is it, do you allow cash on delivery that mm -hmm. you know i don't have mm -hmm. to give you my credit card details do you allow returns mm -hmm. do you have a popular person endorsing mm -hmm. You know, and so forth and so on. These are issues within an issue. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. not well, just because you have a startup doesn't mean that you, you're going to solve the problem of the world because okay. in itself you have a problem when the, as a startup. No? Uh, yeah. Okay. So you mentioned about that key um, uh, factor, which is building trust. So in, in, your, in your conversations with uh, startups or even the big brands, how do, they, how do you establish trust for your brand? Well, I, I mentioned a, a couple, no? and uh, I think part of it is that uh, you need to have a lot more. You need to, to make sure that it, the experience is very good, very convenient. Mm -hmm. So if you say this is going to be delivered on this day, you want to make sure it's delivered on a certain mm -hmm. day, Correct. on a certain time. All right. Because otherwise, it's my first experience, and I don't get it, and I, I have horrible experience. That's it. I may not want to do business with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The principle of digital and the traditional business are the same. <clears throat> it's really awareness, trial, and repeat purchase. Mm -hmm. So I will still try digitally, but you've got to make me trust you. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so I, I also mentioned about having an endorser, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I also mentioned about having, uh, you know, so you can also add having tie up with credible brands. I because see. if I'm consumer and then you have credible brand, credible people there, then I said, maybe you're credible, maybe I should, you're trustworthy. Mm -hmm. But if you have a brand that is not known and you have, nobody knows you and there are no testimonial, mm -hmm. the people will be scared. Mm -hmm. you know? So you've got to do a good job. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. The beginning. Uh, that, that, that's very fantastic, sir. When you said about uh, partnerships, because even in the startup uh, world now, we see a lot of uh, um, incubation and acceleration by the <coughs> larger brands. Actually, the larger brands, the telcos, have their own uh, startup businesses. And we see partnerships between them, like uh, SM Development uh, uh, or, or, S or, or uh, Ayala's and other companies. Yeah. Uh, how do you, what are the strategies to come up with um, a good collaboration with the uh, well, popular brands? But I think, but it has a good question, but I, I want to just go one step backward okay. and say, why do they do that in the first place? Mm -hmm. Because with big companies, they're like elephants. No? It's kind of hard to move. Mm -hmm. And many are publicly listed. So they need to protect financials. Mm -hmm. And naturally, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. All companies will have to protect their financials. Mm -hmm. uh, so if they have a separate company, mm -hmm. which is away from the main company, it, it's a lot easier to move. Mm -hmm. so, and then they can start creating a lab. They can experiment. Mm -hmm. uh, and whatever financial implication of that, at least the mother company is not going to be as mm -hmm. affected. Mm -hmm. And so you have what is called an intrapreneurship program mm -hmm. so that you nurture entrepreneurs within a corporate setting. No? Mm -hmm. And hopefully they create something that is not just a me too, but you know, a real innovative product. No? Mm -hmm. In innovation, I say there are so many concepts. My, um, my purest perspective is First, it has to be new in the market. Mm -hmm. You're the first. And the second is it has to be commercially successful. Mm -hmm. Just because you launch something new doesn't mean that you're an innovator. You're mm -hmm. an inventor for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. But to be an innovator, I mean, you have to be com commercially su successful. No? Mm -hmm. Now, to the point of so promoting collaboration, I think it's important uh, that, uh, you know, groups within a corporate the bigger corporate mm -hmm. uh, group will need to give as much freedom to this group because there's a there's a conflict of philosophy uh, one is about efficiency where you want to standardize everything mm -hmm. but innovation is not about standardization mm -hmm. it's about 
you, you need to get off track and start <laughs> experimenting. Mm. Disrupt it. It's, mm. you know, uh, hopefully you can disrupt it. And, and, and instead of you disrupt yourself, instead of a competitor disrupting, at least you can at least manage the transition. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that makes uh, businesses today very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. So who, who normally initiates it, sir? Is it the big companies who have this idea of uh, nurturing uh, entrepreneurship? Or was it also a factor of uh, disruptive individuals who want to shake up this big company? Well, you know, there are several ways of doing it. Uh, one is that companies uh, like uh, your guest uh, a few weeks ago, Joe Magsaysa, and I, mm -hmm. we, we're actually yeah. angel investor. We have mm -hmm. the Jeremiah Fund. Mm -hmm. And uh, JCI Manila helps us mm -hmm. look for investors mm -hmm. uh, or, or look for investment opportunities, rather. We're the investor. Okay. Uh, and, so, and we're looking for innovators, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in the marketplace. No? Uh, so you can have startups who are innovators. Uh, and you can also have companies within, with, you know, the big companies initiating their own in innovation group. Mm -hmm. So there are two ways. And then you can have big companies having their own uh, venture, like a ven venture capital fund, mm -hmm. investing in companies uh, who are open to investment that says, mm -hmm. okay, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run a competition. You can join. Mm -hmm. But I will allow you access to my facilities. I'll mm -hmm. give you working space. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll let you have access to our people. You get free consulting, mm -hmm. uh, the support that big companies can give you. And you can have access because they can be a customer. Mm -hmm. Of course, the startup would be very happy because suddenly they solve so mm -hmm. many, you know. So <laughs> many, you know. Uh, but not all the time, you know, those technology and telecom company would like to, to do that because, again, there are still so many options out there. Mm -hmm. Of the two models that you mentioned, sir, in the Philippines, which, is, which has a bigger impact, the bigger companies having their own uh, venture capital invested or the ones who are really looking for uh, you, funding? You, you know, statistics... Uh, have shown that uh, the bigger companies have higher success probability mm -hmm. than the smaller companies. And there's a reason why. One very important reason. It's about scaling. Mm -hmm. A startup, yeah. you start up a business, sure, you have a fantastic idea. How do you scale? Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. need resources, you need distribution channels. Mm -hmm. you need, but a big company, the distribution is already there. They have no mm -hmm. brand, they have relationship, they have, so the probability, it's in their favor. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why companies said, well, you know, why don't we marry the best of both worlds? I just buy you an along or a piece of you, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. that you're happy, you, you know, you, you, you're not 100% of the company, but the scale that I give you, you're actually going to get a lot more. Correct. So that's, you know, I think that's a marrying of both, a win-win concept. It's good, sir, that you mentioned that you are also an angel investor. So yeah. before we go into a break, um, my question is, what are you looking at or what are you looking for in, uh, you know, in startups uh, that you want to fund? I'm sure there's a lot of entrepreneurs, there's a lot of students or, or millennials who are watching now. Yeah. If they have their big idea, how do you, uh, when you pitch it, what is it that uh, the marketing guru will, you know, uh, give his time, precious time to look at it and say, okay, your idea is dead or your idea is bright, I can, you know, spare you some time. What is it that you're looking for? I have, uh, in fact, I have three tests, that three set of questions that I ask. Okay. The first is I call the relevant tests. Mm -hmm. So, you know, many people have ideas, of course, you know, but are the ideas good ideas or not? So my first test is, uh, what will I lose if I don't buy your product? Mm -hmm. That I cannot get it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and many would fail immediately. I say, mm -hmm. well, then you're not innovative enough, mm -hmm. correct? Because okay. I don't lose anything. Yeah. You're not solving a real pain point. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people, they know how to manufacture, they know how to do this. But what pain point are you solving? 
Mm-hmm. And, and what do I lose if I don't buy your product? Uh, irrelevance test. The second is called the uniqueness test. Okay. What's what is one word that you you can own that nobody can even come close to you? Mm-hmm. You're so unique. Mm-hmm. Ikaw lang. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and the third one is believe believability. Mm-hmm. Why you? I mean, you have brilliant idea, but why you? Why is, are you the right person? Mm-hmm. So if you have a if you have a a product, do you have that technical background, for example, or do you have certain special training that would make me believe in in you immediately? Mm-hmm. Or moving forward, you know, I can be I, I can have the peace of mind. Say, okay, moving forward, I'll still work with you. Mm-hmm. But of course, you know, some can be imperfect. Mm-hmm. So then, that's where we come in and start. You know, looking for our network, helping them, and that's how that's how it works. Now, so if if they're interested, go to Facebook. <laughs> there is the Dojo Fund of the JCI, Manila. Dojo Fund. Dojo is D O J O. Dojo Double Joe. Okay. Joe Mag Joe Josiah. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know. That's perfect. So, the three tests obviously is a very hard test. So, uh, Open for Business will be back uh, more from the marketing guru, Mr. Joe Sayago, when Open for Business returns. Stay with us. Open for Business is back and still with me is the marketing guru, Mr. Josiah Go, Sir, you mentioned earlier about um, scaling up. It's not just putting up a startup and that's it. You live it. So the, the key uh, thing that has to be done is scaling up or um, what's the other term? They, they say uh, scale up or just sell it. So my question is, how do you scale up? Well, uh, there are steps involved, Mm -hmm. and the very important step is you must have a compelling value proposition, Okay. which is really, you know, the first place you look at your product service and as well as your price. Mm -hmm. If you have a compelling proposition, it facilitates and it accelerates your word of mouth. Mm -hmm. People will tell other people, Mm -hmm. and when they tell other people, they look for you. Mm-hmm. And many people commit that mistake. They say, we scale up, let's come up with marketing. Mm-hmm. I said, no, mm-hmm. it's your value proposition. And, and you, if you have a compelling value proposition, it also helps you in terms of your distribution channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, if you have a product <coughs> that will not cannibalize whatever is available in the market, mm-hmm. the trade would be a lot happier to carry you. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it's really incremental income for them. Mm-hmm. 
so I think that's one. And then the second thing is you need to promote your business or your brand. Mm -hmm. Many many new companies that I know of, you know, they tell me, you know, pag may pera na ako, if I have money, then I'll just invest. So I ask them, which comes first? Mm -hmm. You promote yourself or sales comes first? Mm -hmm. Of course, you have to promote yeah. and then sales comes. But, you know, so that's, it's a, it's a wrong concept. That's, that's the reason why I said, if you want to start a business, mm -hmm. make sure you have enough funds for promotion. Mm -hmm. You don't want to overspend Mm -hmm. Neither do you want to underspend. Mm -hmm. And that's and my advice to entrepreneurs is that be open to have business partners. Mm -hmm. Because if you have a business and you cannot scale, it's as if you did not have a business. Mm -hmm. You have a hobby. I mean, you know, you have, <laughs> I mean, you know, why why do you want to start in the first place, right? Yes. So then you have a value proposition, you have to promote yourself, create awareness, and then make people try you. Mm -hmm. so that they can understand this is a very good product or a very good service and, and, and you know in this day and age of Instagrammable it makes people Instagram you know, <laughs> they even help you promote it's like a cycle you know okay sir but a lot of people will say promotion may involve you know a lot or cost you a lot is that still uh, relevant today or because of the advent of social media promotion yeah. is now cheaper or it's even free well you 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 have uh, that's why you have a network mm -hmm. because your your network of friends and your family would be your initial customer mm -hmm. and subsequently of course people will you know when they like the product uh, they would naturally, they tend to tell other people. But you and I know, if we have a product and it's ordinary, why would I, what way? There's no reason for me to get excited. Mm -hmm. But if it's something very exciting, you tend to tell other people. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, you even promote. I would promote it in my Facebook. Mm -hmm. I would promote it in Instagram. And, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. I'm not even getting paid, but I, mm -hmm. would, I would do that. And, you know, many people would do that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to do that, that you, you need to look at your skill. And then collaboration, be mm -hmm. open to collaboration. Mm -hmm. If you don't have your own distribution channel, can you have, collaborate with others mm -hmm. and allow other, you know, let others earn because they need to distribute your product, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, these are, you know, the basic steps mm -hmm. to make sure that you scale. But all of these other efforts will go to waste if your value proposition is not really weak. very good. It's right. just, you have a weak proposition. So sir, going back to collaboration, how do you find a good partner or a collaborator? Because uh, of course, in terms of, no, uh, of uh, competition nowadays, you know, everybody is uh, offering the same uh, products. And now when you partner, uh, I think one of the readings also is that uh, we have a different uh, Filipino culture uh, where um, there's also crab mentality and they're afraid that their ideas will be um, uh, copied or be, you know, what, what's your, um, how do you find a good collaborator? How do you find a good partner for your startup? I will, in fact, do the reverse. Instead of finding a collaborator, mm -hmm. let them find you. How? Because if you have a very good proposition, okay, and you start test, and it's a lot easier to test now. You can test it in Facebook. So you know, mm -hmm. ordinarily, how many likes do you get? And then you start posting something. You mm -hmm. take a look. Suddenly, the number of <laughs> likes spike up. Correct. So there's something there. Correct. Yes. But if you post something and you know the normal, you get 20 likes, 20, and then none of your <laughs> friends even like it. It's also a good feedback. Yes. Correct. And then you know if you use the right hashtag, you know, and you can email some people. Uh, if you have a network of friends, they can introduce you to the mm -hmm. right people, mm -hmm. and they can put the right word for you you can have distributors mm -hmm. and and or you can have agent mm -hmm. and the agent can put a good word for you mm -hmm. so that you know the right people might even go and see you mm -hmm. uh, you know remember this word called R&D research mm -hmm. and development you know uh, before you have innovation you have R&D but you know some progressive companies call it C&D now connect and develop 
connect and develop. That they don't want to do it themselves. That their job is really to connect with the right people, with the right organization, with the academic community of an ecosystem. You know, academic community, you have, you know, funders, you have people who are your eyes and ears. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so, so, so you need to have th those network mm -hmm. so that it can help you uh, get things done. Mm -hmm. You know, many startup, uh, if it can help them, if they if they know many people, mm -hmm. but if they're they 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 don't know many people, mm -hmm. uh, that's gonna be tough. No? They need to have a partner that would know people mm -hmm. and a good network. Yeah. So mm -hmm. so if they don't have a good network, get a partner mm -hmm. who has that network. Mm -hmm. So I can it can solve uh, the you know the the, the problem. Mm. Sir, based also from the available data that we have, and also this was confirmed by uh, by the founder Institute Manila director, five percent uh, own five percent of the startups uh, make it. Yeah. In your uh, experience, exposure, sir, with these startups, what are usually their challenges? What's their mistakes? You know that a new startup should They're avoid. They run out of money. <laughs> funding, funding, talaga. Yeah, because first is they want to all. Very sure. I always tell, talk to entrepreneurs. Why do you want to do it yourself? Mm -hmm. Because I want to. I, I don't want to work with other people. Then then you get out of your comfort zone, learn how to partner. Mm -hmm. Because that's what partnership is, is all about. Mm -hmm. I need something. You don't. I don't have it. I get you. Mm -hmm. You don't have it. You know, and and I tell young people, you want to have startup. So why do you help? Why do you partner with your friends? And so mm -hmm. of course they're shocked. So mm -hmm. what? What's wrong mm -hmm. with me partnering with your friend? Mm -hmm. Well, I see you're young. He's also young. So mm -hmm. uh, and my premise is that young people don't have the money. <laughs> so and 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 because I ask that because I know yeah, okay. one of the reasons is that you know you run out of money. Mm -hmm. And I said, so can you consider partnering with an older person? Mm -hmm. successful why because the older successful persons they have the money they don't have the time they leave you alone and you can run it and young people like to run it exactly they you get it yeah they're so, very independent it's, and so that's the that's a lot of mistake of startup funding the kind of partners that they choose mm -hmm. and so, so i said can you think of criteria decision making think of criteria first mm -hmm. not because we're friends i like you we be partner so is that a criteria for business because I like you? Mm -hmm. Probably not. It probably yes, but probably not. But in the, you know, you've got to start thinking about how do you complete what you really need in a business. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, I think we have a lot of questions, but I have never asked one, or I ask a couple of them. So we hope that uh, Mr. Go will uh, come back here in the show. But before we. Um, um, say goodbye to you, sir. Um, you have been in the business and you have mentored a lot of us, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs. Yeah. So far, sir, you've, you've seen and heard their disappointments. What is common in those disappointments? Uh, but you have to clarify, disappointment in terms of, of what? Disappointments in terms of... Uh, scaling their their business in uh, terms of uh, growing their business because as we mentioned a lot of them fail a lot of them you know close up and then they get to uh, regret that they left their corporate okay. job so i get enter. it okay i get it you know and part, one of one of the biggest violations is called supply side thinking they enter they come Sorry, sir, supp supply side thinking okay supply side thinking. supply side thinking means that you know you know how to do something mm -hmm. you start doing it but that my question is what's the demand mm -hmm. just because you know how to do it you want to do a business sure every anybody can do that mm -hmm. but of course <laughs> that's why the criteria is well shouldn't it be about demand not about supply mm -hmm. because if you have supply and I would judge in some some contest no? And you know, and and it's it's uh, entrepreneur would say, this is what I've done, etc. And I always ask one question. And the, the you know, uh, and the and the question that I ask is, 
have you talked to the customer? What did the customer mm. tell you? Because mm -hmm. a lot of times the way they explain it is, I'm, I know how to do it, I'm expert in doing it. <laughs> but the gap is in the factory, it's not in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Better be in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. That's marketing thinking. Mm -hmm. right? Correct. So, how do you really be immersed into that market? I, I know there's a lot of inciting being done, you know, knowing what your what the market needs are, what, what are the basics for you to be immersed in the market and know the, what the market I, needs? I, for my, my, my practical advice to start up is to really understand at least two fundamental things to get new truths. Mm -hmm. Understand what the customers don't like. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is understand their wish list. What they don't like and their wish list. Wish list. Because if they, if they have a wish list, it's kind of, you don't have to think of the answer. They're already <laughs> telling you the wish list. It's called user generated innovation. And what I've discovered, and I wrote about this in my, my I have a book on entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. uh, starting a business, uh, creating an innovation mindset. Mm -hmm. And I wrote about this, wish list user, you know, uh, user generated innovation. I asked uh, the owner of uh, French Baker, mm -hmm. where did you get the 50% off idea? Mm -hmm. And the answer I got, he said, well, my, one customer suggested, what do you do with the products unsold? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the owner asked, what do you suggest? Mm -hmm. and, and the customer said, well, sell it for 50% off. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, come back after two days. Let me think about it. But it was suggested by a yes, customer. Yes. Victoria Court had a, they now have a popular party, you know, for people getting married. They have a stag party. Or, correct, uh, correct. You know, Families, yes. Oh, no, no, not the family, but. Ah, not the fa know, okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Oh, that, that's a different general par par party, but it's a different segment. So I asked the owner, so where did you get this part? Because, you know, that's not your primary market. Mm -hmm. He said, well, a customer actually asked permission if they can do it. And the owners, the late owner, Archie King, said, yeah, I said, yeah, try it. Mm -hmm. Take a look at it. So, you know, wish list is very powerful. Mm -hmm. So you can, you, you, and sometimes people start banging their head and say, what do I want to do? <laughs> Just ask the customer. Mm -hmm. And many times they already have it, or either they have it or they have something in their mind. But the mm -hmm. second thing is this, like, you know, get insights. What mm -hmm. are barriers? Why are they not buying your product? You know, and understand them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's my very practical tip to entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Perfect, sir. Now, sir, before we let you go, what's next for the marketing guru? What's next? You've been in the business, you've mentored a lot, but here you are, you, you, you still produce books, you, you have a market master's conference, you teach the younger kids. What is your vision? Are you... Uh, I don't see you retiring, <laughs> <laughs> but you are just well, beginning. What's, what's uh, next Chick for you? is the CEO of Mansmith. No? Mm -hmm. Chiki and I, we do a lot of advocacies. We spend a lot of advocacy. We also have other activities and, and that raise funds to, to finance our advocacies. Mm -hmm. Because mahal ang advocacies. Eh. We, you know, we, we are the promoter of young market masters. So we don't even charge anything. Mm -hmm. So for the last 15 years, it's the first and only award for young marketeers, mm -hmm. 35 years old and below. Putting young entrepreneurs then, mm -hmm. 35 years old and below. Uh, and so we, we have so many, there's, there's about 10. Uh, I just wrote about it in my blog. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm gonna break the news. I'm gonna launch a book mm -hmm. uh, officially uh, on May 3 called The mm -hmm. Mavericks. Mm -hmm. And I have interviewed 35 marketing rock stars. Wow. And I'm featuring them. Uh, so May 3 will be National Bookstore Shangri-La. It's a little too early for me to, mm -hmm. to do, but I'm going to invite, you know, put it in your calendar. I hope to be there, sir. <laughs> sure. You, you're most welcome. May 3, National Bookstore evening. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but we have a pre-launch April 3 small event you know, mm -hmm. book within a bigger event, which is our 10th Market Masters Conference. Mm -hmm. 
So later, my companion will talk about it. Okay, okay. And I appreciate your help in okay. allowing us to plug a okay. little. Your final words to entrepreneurs and startups. Uh, <clears throat> you know, coming up with uh, business is very good. It gives you that personal freedom and you are in control of your destiny. But also it's important for you to think, do you want to be a Me Too product? Or do you want to be an innovator? And you don't have to be always first. You can have what is called a fast second strategy because some of the first may not be successful. So all you have to do is to look at the first and see how you can tweak it and how you can make it a little bit more successful and create what is called a fast second strategy. Either way, you can still be an innovator. And that is my encouragement. Uh, and hopefully we can recognize many of you in the Mansmith Innovation Award uh, which, you know, just go to Mansmith and Fielder's website. We will announce that pretty soon. Uh, and uh, good luck to your business. That's it. Uh, we are very lucky to have the marketing guru here uh, the, in Open for Business. And we hope to invite him again because uh, there's a lot of questions that were not asked. And uh, with this uh, very short interview, we hope that startups and entrepreneurs will hyperdrive their marketing strategies with uh, the talk of Mr. Josiah Go, the chairman of Mansmith and Fielders, and also Waters Philippines. Appreciate your invitation. Open for Business will be back. Stay with us. for business is back but before I introduce our uh, other guest this afternoon I'd like to give a shout out to people who um, sent their messages uh, on uh, Facebook we have Andromeda Verdad she said thank you for the incisive discussion learning a lot po Mark Tacorda said I love this topic Thousands of people are looking for the real opportunity of making money on the internet. And there's a lot more. Um, now, right uh, with me is the division manager of Mansmith and Fielders, Ms. Tessa Gayanes, to talk about Market Masters Conference. What do we expect from that 
um, event, Tessa. Thanks for having us, Cesar. As Josiah mentioned a while ago, we're having the 10th Man Smith Market Masters Conference, dubbed as the Marketing Conference of the Year, happening on April 3, 2019 at SMX Convention Center. Man have Smith, you been doing this uh, for several years? We have been doing it for several, several years now. And, and uh, this is, uh, this is the, 10th. the 10th edition so already. So we're very excited. We're celebrating a 10th year milestone for Man Smith. We are bringing 35 award-winning marketing rock stars in one stage so imagine several local and multinational companies marketing heads mm -hmm. of local and multinational companies will be there in one stage the likes of Procter & Gamble Unilever Nestle the VP for relationship marketing of Resorts World Genting in mm -hmm. Malaysia and the director of brand and channel marketing of DKSH Singapore will come to Manila and be part of that event so that's oh, perfect so aside from the rock star Josiah go who else <laughs> uh, can, can you name some um, people who will be speaking at this conference the mark country marketing director of Procter and Gamble Lester Estrada will be there mm -hmm. the president and general manager of Electrolux Chad Sotelo will be there as well as well as the vice president for marketing of Unilever Dorothy D. Ching will be mm -hmm. there and the one I mentioned who's coming from Malaysia Dr. Nikotan who is mm -hmm. an expert in data analytics will be there as well and other 35 award-winning marketing rock stars together with the Mansfield mentors will all be part of the event who should attend this event because definitely uh, mm -hmm. the you know the list is very impressive yes. who should be attending this conference we're encouraging marketing teams and professionals to mm -hmm. be part of the events entrepreneurs can also attend so they can gauge or network with other attendees we're expecting about 1,000 marketing professionals in that event so definitely marketing teams marketing professionals starting entrepreneurs so they can learn what these big brands have been doing in their businesses mm -hmm. um, what specific topics are covered? Are there uh, specific sessions? Yes. Okay. We have prepared six topics. Mm -hmm. We are going to do six in the panel discussion mm -hmm. among our inciting and sense making. Mm -hmm. There is challenging marketing and defense marketing. There's also market driving innovations. The fifth session is all about channel marketing and mm -hmm. lastly, the marketing trends, what's happening in the industry, how can you be ahead of the curve? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's very, uh, yeah, that, that's a lot. <laughs> so of these, uh, how were how you able to um, develop these specific uh, topics? Uh, are these based on um, um, a specific need also of the market? How, how did you design these uh, topics, Tessa? Well, for one, Josiah Go is the conference chair of the 10th Mansfit Market mm -hmm. Masters Conference. So he put together the topics for the conference. And as we have been seeing in the past years, these are topics commonly asked, not just only by our clients, but of the marketing industry. We want to equip them with the latest knowledge, with the latest tools for them to be able to be ahead of the curve and keep on um, updating themselves and eventually be able to connect the dots and see the bigger picture out there. That is perfect. That's Miss Tessa Gayanes, the Division Manager of Mansmith & Fielders for the CU at the 10th Market Masters Conference. Open for business. We'll be back. Stay tuned. Thank you, Tessa. Thank you.
In our term of the week, you take a refresher of business terms to make you updated, more informed, and ready to make smarter business decisions. Our term for the week is incubator. An incubator firm is an organization engaged in the business of fostering early stage companies through the developmental phases until the companies have sufficient financial, human resources, and physical resources to function on their own. Incubators provide assistance that includes access to financial capital, experience, business consultants, physical location space, and business hardware or software, and other resources. An incubator firm that functions for profit will look to gain equity in the company in exchange for their services. Sometimes simple, simple fees are charged at the time of service, but gaining equity in an early stage company with strong growth prospects is the ultimate goal and one that can provide a financial windfall for the incubator firm if the early stage company takes off. And our code of the week is from Ron Conway, a noted startup investor, SV Angel. He said, anytime is a good time to start a company. Join us again next Saturday, 5 p.m. Philippine time for another episode of Open for Business where we discuss business information, deliver the latest business news to keep you informed and open for business and be ahead of the curve from vision to action. You're on Facebook Live on Eagle News and you can watch this again in the video section of the Eagle News Facebook page and on eaglenewslive.com. Also visit postinglive.com for news and updates on Open for Business. Catch me later at 9 p.m. and every Wednesday also on 9 p.m. on Net25's Eagle News International as I report more business news here and around the world. For Open for Business, this is Cesar Vallejos. Have a great day. Open for Business was presented by Eagle Broadcasting Corporation and Globe My Business. Create your success.